I have been going through the just-released Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative investigative report. It's about 100 pages, and it's the first investigation into the Indian boarding school system. This is part of an effort to examine and recognize the dark history this country has in its treatment of indigenous people and the fallout that's still happening. The fact that I am standing here today as the first indigenous cabinet secretary is testament to the strength and determination of native people. That is U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland. Last summer, she spearheaded an investigation into federally run Indian boarding schools. Now, the first volume of that investigation has been released. For more than a century, tens of thousands of indigenous children were taken from their communities and forced into boarding schools run by the U.S. government. Kill the Indian and spare the man was the statement that was made. Um, the effort was to assimilate us into American society, to take away our language, to take away our culture and take our land. State Representative Tana Sanchez says she's only the second Native person to serve in the Oregon legislature. She's also involved with the Native American Youth and Family Center in Portland. Sanchez says the investigation is important for many reasons. It's sort of, uh, again, shining that light. But it might also be an answer to why things are the way they are. But she says the information is also heavy and could potentially re-traumatize people. Excuse me. This has left lasting scars for all indigenous people. Our work shows that from 1819 to 1969, the United States operated or supported 408 boarding schools across 37 states or then territories, including 21 schools in Alaska and seven in Hawaii. Oregon had nine boarding schools, one of which still operates today in a much different capacity, but with the same troubled past. Chamawa Indian School in Salem with the cemetery nearby. The federal investigation found 53 marked and unmarked burial sites across the U.S. Many died, often far from their homes and families. But many also survived. One of the survivors, James LaBelle, remembers his time at a boarding school in Alaska. Uh, I learned everything about the European-American culture, but I didn't know anything about who I was as a Native person. That impact trickles down. And I don't speak my language. And I have limited ability to you know, engage in my own culture. With the pain of discovering dark truths, the hope is there's also healing. Our children deserve to be found. Every worthwhile journey begins with its first step. And the work we will do with the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative will have a transformational impact on the generations who follow. The investigation also found that about 19 boarding schools accounted for more than 500 child deaths. That number is expected to rise as the investigation and research continues. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News.